Hey, it's Brad Parker, Crystal Palace fan, and you are listening to the Drunkard United Football Show. It's a parade. And boy, oh boy, was I a parade this Saturday. So I've heard. Ooh, man. Whiskey was a flowing. The beers were cold. Started drinking at two in the afternoon. Nothing wrong with that. Was a drunken, stupid mess by 11:30 when the wife got home. I go bed now. I go bed now. That's kind of how it works, you know. When the king's got to go to bed, king's got to go to bed. Anyways, anyways, let's start the show. Hello and welcome to the Drunken United yes. Football Show. Hey, completely biased recap of the English Premier League is told by two common American schmucks. Even when there's weird shit that goes off in your ears that doesn't go over the recording for some reason, I still managed to get it done, even though there was no, definitely didn't. a long You missed pause. the post. It's because he's going to call sabotage and blame that. Oh, yeah. I had to pause it out. I was on count, and then he was, the fucking... He really was. And then, then the, the computer computer went off. The, and he goes, I saw it in his eyes. Look at me going, you bitch. <laughs> nah. That would have been, what, four weeks in a row? I don't call you a bitch. <laughs> what, what do I call you, honey? A whore. Okay, and now <laughs> you're hitting the mute button. <laughs> I'm your host, Sam Houston. Across the way from me is uh, That's terrible. that one. That one. That one. Just Jesus you. Christ. You. You could have gone with that grinning son of a bitch. I you know. know. There's so many ways. No, I'm just gone. glad you didn't get four in a row. That's all I care about. Okay. So how are you doing, Sammy? Very well. Thank you. Okay. Since you were thrown off something. You know, professionals <laughs> push through those sorts of things. Just saying. Don't normally expect them to be thrown in my ear <laughs> right as I get ready to say, let's start the show. <laughs> We're recording at Studio H, just outside our nation's capital. You can check us out on all podcast platforms. Be sure to subscribe, rate, review, and uh, share with your footballing friends or just share with any friend in general. Um, should you want to chat with us, there is many ways that you can. Sam, why don't you tell the good people how they can get in touch? Absolutely. Uh, always hit us up on the DMs through our uh, uh, social media. Jesus. Words are hard. Brain fart. That here. professional bit you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, early in the show. I always do that to myself, too. As soon as I say something to him, it fucking backfires. It pleases me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, make sure you check out at DU Football Show. Um, and again, we do check our DMs, so hit us up. Uh, and then dufootballshow at gmail.com to get in touch via email. And yes, I read the sign. I saw you see me do that. Yes. So I read the banner. <laughs> Well done. I couldn't right remember our fucking email address. Good, good job. Um, <laughs> you got me all flustered. Uh, how about, uh, hey guys, uh, if you've got a bet of the week, uh, email in for us. Uh, you know, we like doing Pat's bets, we like doing our bets, but we like hearing from you too. So yeah, we had definitely, a bet uh, from Ray earlier in the season, a bet from Josh earlier in the season. Uh, Dom, you know, everybody. Yeah, Dom hit him up uh, uh, on the. Actually, just he sent us on the Instagram DMs his bet. Yep. So just yeah. uh, make it interesting. Be, like I said, be entertaining. Check all of our stuff. Hit us yeah, up. Be entertaining. Send us a bet of the week. Uh, if you've never reached out to us before, that's a fun way to reach out to us. And uh, as long as you keep winning your bet, you keep getting to bet every week after that, too. So Sam and myself both work in the wine and spirit industry and both have a deep, passionate love for all things distilled spirits. So is the red blooded Americans we are. We vow to have a drink in our hand throughout this show and every show. Sammy. We drinking a humdinger today. It is the 2019 Whiskey Advocate number one whiskey of the year. George Dickel's Bottled and Bond Tennessee Whiskey. Uh, Bottled and Bond is just a touch more government oversight where they come in, stamp your barrel for you, make sure uh, it is bottled at 100 proof after you open that barrel, um, which this is. Uh, this is a 13-year-old whiskey, and it should run you about $45 to $49.99. But because of this recent wonderful accolade, that's going to bump you up to about $69.99 to $79.99 on the shelf. Um, this is a Tennessee whiskey, which can only be made in Tennessee, and the other big difference to bourbon. Uh, so Tennessee whiskey does have a bourbon mash bill, typically. Yep. Uh, uses the same um, unused, brand-new white American oak yep. barrels, charred to a number three minimum aged for a minimum of two years, and distilled twice. But big difference is, is they use charcoal mellow, uh, mellowing, which is sugar maple, um, I guess, wood bricks yeah. that have been burnt to almost be like charcoal. Yep. Uh, and it is dripped over those, um, kind of filtered through those, uh, and then put in the barrel. So what? Uh, that's the big difference it, between Tennessee whiskey and bourbon. Uh, the the industry standard that everybody knows is Jack Daniels, and if you notice, Jack Daniels is a little bit sweeter than uh than say like a Jim Beam, which is a bourbon. And the main reason behind it is that sugar maple that is uh 
that charcoal mellowing that's used. And that sugar maple adds a lot of sweetness and character to it. Um, it's something that uh, Tennesseans take pride in. And um, I know that there's not a lot of Tennessee whiskeys out there. Dickel, Jack, um, Nelson Greenbrier, uh, the Bell Mead Boys, they make a Tennessee whiskey as well. Doesn't Dickel also make a bourbon? Um, as yes, well, they do. Don't they? Yeah. yeah. They do so a bourbon, they do a rye. Bourbon just has to be made in the U.S. Tennessee right. whiskey must be made in Tennessee, is Absolutely. that correct? Absolutely. Must yep. be made in Tennessee, must use the charcoal mellowing process, must use brand new American white oak. There was a little bit of a push for a while um, by some uh, nefarious larger companies that we won't bother discussing because um, it has <coughs> something to do with this brand um, uh, that were trying to make it... Um, not new American oak to AKA cheapen the brand to make its uh, industry counterpart come off as a cheaper whiskey. And even the smaller craft guys fought and said, no, we won't, we'll pay the extra money. We want new oak. It, we always want it to be new oak. So it actually went to, uh, went to uh, federal court and they won. So this was about like five years ago. Tell me all fair. That's interesting. I want to know what <laughs> brand that was. Oh, it was Dickel. Yeah, oh. <laughs> they fought for. It was well. Using it was used it barrels. was it was the supplier that represents Dickel. Oh, uh, they fought for using used barrels, right? Because uh, if you cheapen Jack Daniels, suddenly Jack Daniels sales don't go escalating over another brand of yours, Johnny Walker, in the China market, which is drastically larger than the United States market. Absolutely. So yeah, you try to cheapen your competitor. You know, at your Fair own enough. at your own expense, but it helps the other members of the of the. Well, Jack also portfolio. doesn't make a bourbon, right? They don't. Dickel does. Nope. Jack Jack only makes Tennessee whiskey. That is, well, they do make a rye now, but I think that's more just a uh, keeping up with the Joneses because I think most liquor brands as a whole, a lot of the guys in Kentucky didn't really want to make rye. Rye's weren't very successful, and right. You know, a little brand like mine suddenly started making rise really well, and a lot of other craft people started making rise really well, and Kentucky had to answer and suddenly start making rye whiskey. Absolutely. So, but uh, it's, a, it's a lovely little whiskey. Um, it reminds me kind of like old school Kentucky slash Tennessee type of whiskey, like, you right. know, old granddad, wild turkey, just made really well. Gotcha. Just, yeah, nothing that truly knocks your socks off, really, but it ticks every single box. And very consistent. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah. Balanced. Um, doesn't drink like 100 proof. You know, it's definitely, it drinks like a softer proof. So, pretty nice. Well, the other thing, forget all that shit we just <laughs> told you. Um, in honor of the dick helicopter last week uh, that we talked about from yes. a Newcastle fan, I have another dick for you at the end of this show. Um, we're drinking George Dick. Oh, heard. Cheers, guys. Let's have a great show. Cheers. I love the way the expenses glass, the expensive glasses sound. Expenses glass, expensive what, glasses. I, I write them off for like they're a tax credit <laughs> or something. <laughs> expenses glasses is what I was going uh, to say. Okay, really good, you know. And you haven't been drinking much yet, Jesus. Um, shorter schedule did not disappoint, Sam. Uh, all six games were really enjoyable, and a couple even had a little bit of controversy to them. Yes. Tottenham three, Villa two, Manchester United two, Chelsea nil. Um, what a game. It was a great game. What a oh. game. It was excellent. It was end-to-end -end stuff. I mean, I mean, both teams were in it. Oh, and yeah. Neither, neither team really had much care for defense. And the Walter mm. Payton no Man of the Year Award winner in the EPL, Song Min Hyun, or Song Hyun Min. What? Wow. What a nice guy. Grabbing a brace. Pepe Reina gifting it to him on a platter. You've had a tough time recently. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, yeah, we're all kind of really <laughs> super happy about that one. Um, I jumped up at the PK when Pepe, I'm sorry, when Spanish Howard stopped it. Yeah, and then Spanish no Howard. sooner had I stretched my arms, I was in mid-cheer when the fucking rebound came through. Well, did you see his anger? At the end of the, at his players not getting to the. Pulled an old Fabian Bartes. Who oh, yeah. grabbed hold of grabbed the shorts. The shorts, pulled them up. Who did? Screaming. Pepe Reina, Pepe Spanish Reina. Howard. That one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As soon as it, the goal went in, when they showed the oh, replay, oh, they showed that. his reaction to oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Grabbing oh, shorts, gave himself the thong, full thighs out. Oh, screaming. Still muscular at 37, by the way. Um, everything was, all the veins were popping. You saw his head. Everything was going nuts. 
Of course. I mean, that guy played, to borrow a phrase from Mr. Houston, that guy played his dick off. Oh, yeah. Like, it and was he, incredible. It's a, shame, it's a shame the man of the match was a goalkeeper who gave up mm. three fucking I goals. I know, right? That was well, the man of the match. No. He looked like a small The Rock from <laughs> Fast and Furious 7, I think it was. When, yeah. Is that when he The Rock got the goatee? Yeah, I think they so, They yeah. looked quite similar. When he was yeah. raging, oh, my goodness. I'd argue Hashtag that... Hashtag swole. Hashtag VAR games. lost that game for us again. And that Angles... Well, Angles kind of canceled out his own goal, but still... I think the pen was a pen. I, he didn't but get why the were they was, looking at it? I thought it was pretty soft. They didn't get the ball. Yeah. He, got, he got part of the ball. No, he didn't. He, he didn't did. touch he the ball at all. No, he, he did. did not. He, he did. did. After he took the man... He got some of the ball. After I he just, took the man, though. I, y- yes, yes, you can call that a penalty. Absolutely, you can call that a penalty. I, again, more reason for there to not be a VAR, because is that really, is, oh, especially considering today, are we really doing the game any favors by having VAR look at, look at these calls? No. We'll, we'll talk at it later about yeah. that, too. Yeah, we know the there answer was... to that question. No. Well, it's it, my problem with VAR is not that it intervenes when it should. My problem with VAR is that it doesn't intervene when it should. Yeah. It, which we'll come on to at the Manchester United game. Right. Precisely. Um, after punk ass Harry Maguire kicked someone in the nutsack. Right. <laughs> uh, definite sending off. Definite violent conduct. Very obvious. Yeah. Nothing. nothing. It just. Um, I was. So that's excited. the shit that makes me mad. You know. But oh, well, we got to look for three minutes to figure out if Giroud's half of his boots off or Jean Matinho, who we'll talk about later as well in the Wolves Leicester match. Yeah. The pat his Nike sign on his boots was offside. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yep. You know, but this I think is an example of how VAR does work. Mm. Like I said, I think he took the man first. I don't I also don't think he got the ball. I think Bergvine moved the ball before the defender had a chance to get it's, there. It's but all enough. of that all of that fuck off Angles, what are you doing? Yeah. Angles, what are you doing? I mean, I had it prepped what and ready the for. Fucking hell was that? God. Oh. From the Villa supporters directly. Slow feet. He was tired. He was complacent. He figured the game was just He's about a over. He's a 25-year-old international player. He was waiting player. for the whistle. That he was waiting for the whistle. Didn't, didn't, didn't got watch. Caught didn't, hard on his didn't feet watch the ball into his foot. You just yeah. you got one job. The job is to make it. sure yeah. the and ball goes away. And that as ball far gets away to Rosed in the mm. other end of the field. You kick at his end, and he missed it. And yep. he, and he fucking missed it. So, and, and, just... and that that crushed him. Obviously, <sighs> I mean, son with a good finish there. And Pepe Reina, for all of the great work he did, was undone in that moment. Yeah, you know, nothing he could do. No, no. no fair, I'm not saying zero it's his fault. he could do. No, it's not his fault. It's Especially his fault. considering he had already taken away a couple, two, three. Uh, one on oh, one. Du- the, what match. was the double save he had? Was yeah. phenomenal. He just he. he what was it? Sa- Son and Bergvine won it. Yeah, that yep. double save was brilliant. Yeah. Um, penalty was a brilliant save. Just unfortunate. Penalty was an awesome it, save. Un- it was a comfortable un- height for him. Yeah, though. it was about but, uh, shoulder height. But unfortunately, it just it when you're going to make a penalty, you're just trying to make the save. Oh you're yeah. Not, you're and, not and thinking Son about where hit the ball's well. going. Yeah. Son hit it well. It would have been difficult to catch from that close range anyway. Yeah. That's fair enough. I do want that cross. Um, from I can't remember the Villa player that supplied the cross now, uh, but it was, was fan fucking tactic. Mm-hmm. Put it in the perfect mm-hmm. spot. Hugo Lloris started to come. Stop. Alderweireld was waiting for Hugo Lloris to come. There was uh that your new attacker sits Satini, the one from uh, Gank. Like yeah, the one that just came in from Gank. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Um, but anyway, he was behind him, so he had to deal with it. So Alderweireld belatedly. Stuck a boot out, turned it right past his own goalkeeper, but then made up for his error with one of the most brilliant swiveling shoots I've seen ever. Mm-hmm. Pepe Reina again had no chance. No, I mean it, that ball was rifled on on that outer viral goal, the proper goal, not the own goal. Samada, Samada, Samada. Thank you. Um, but that just the turn and swivel was was fantastic. Um and and unfortunate and Reina had it red he just there was just no way he was getting no. there the ball was just hit that hard. Um, if Reina I just, was it, in, if, if if Spanish Howard was in the goal for the man uh was it the Man City game? Ah, uh, Man City still might have. We it wouldn't might. have been it wouldn't have been as bad I don't think <laughs> it still would have been a bad but it wouldn't have been yeah. as bad. Yeah, that's fair enough. 
Oh, well, um, Rain is great the, the, back there. I mean, he's, well, he's, well, he's got loads of experience. And it shows. Loads of and experience. And he maintains his composure. He's back there cheering. Between Jack cheering from the front and him cheering from the back, those mm-hmm. Villa players have got a hug around them, but they keep fucking up every opportunity, and they can't defend without Mings down there putting his players in the right spot. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, um, Danny Drinkwater, thank you for your uh, effort. Um, we need to start He's letting so Marvelous bland. Nakamba start and play, w- and Douglas Louise, and uh, no, drink water, n- no. He's so bland. He, His face looks bland. The, the pro- he is the former player that was Danny Drinkwater. Yes. The confidence the, uh, is his, gone. The, the footballer nothing. formerly known He's as Danny Drinkwater. that's been sitting on the counter a day too long. It yeah. just, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's sad, gone. too. It's gone. There is a player with talent there. That is a guy who that, won the fucking Premier League title. I got it. And, and was I held and and held down the fucking center and the, was the center midfield Absolutely. with with uh Angola Angola Conte. Conte. Yeah. Somebody like, broke him. Yeah, he just it's it it's not working and he was he was getting worked. Mm-hmm. I mean bossed in that first half. So I do want to mention. Yes. Did you see it was in the second half? Uh, just outside the area. I was kind of hoping he'd forget about the Malord. Just outside the area. Uh-huh. And I want you to treat this shot of Malort the way that Jack Grealish treated Harry Winks. <laughs> Did you see when Harry Winks tried to foul Grealish? Uh-huh. And Grealish's calves were about as big oh, as they, Harry Winks' they, head. They turned into little fists on the back of his <laughs> legs. But he went down under the challenge, but only because he wanted to. Right. And even the announcer said, there's no way Harry Winks <laughs> has actually brought down Grealish there. No. It's a foul. Oh, yeah. But if Grealish wanted to stay up, he could definitely have stayed yeah. up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that Jack isn't fouled when he's fouled, but he does, you know. Well, you got to sell it. He might be a little dramatic. Part of the problem is you have to sell it nowadays. We, we talk about it all the time with yeah. penalties. If you don't go down, they're not going to call it, period. The, with the shirt pulling, with the little bit of pushing that goes on, if you don't go down, they're not going to call it. So I have no problem. Right. I, 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 play, I grew up playing basketball. You yeah. take a charge, most of that is embellished. Yeah. On I have no problem with that. I, what I don't like is if when you don't get touched, and you roll around like mm-hmm. you've been shot. Mm-hmm. Neymar. Correct. Yeah. Craig Tupper. I, <laughs> all, <laughs> but That's okay. He won't listen. Yeah, but I have no problem with selling a foul because if you, don't, if you stay on your feet, it's not going to get cold. No. Period. No. Especially yeah. if you stay on your feet, stumble, try to shoot, and miss. They'll be like, oh, you had the advantage. Right. Like, what kind of fucking advantage was exactly. that? Exactly. falling it, over. I mean, the only time that you don't have to fall down is if your shirt is three feet off your back and as you're running through midfield. On a counterattack, mm. the referee will actually call it. I've got one more note on Captain Jack before I do this shot. Um, do you see at the end? Sparrow? Of, yes. Oh, I've been working on a, a parody. I, like, I need I somebody like to Captain sing it. Jack. Do you know the Michael Bolton cover that they did for Saturday Night Live? This is the tale, Captain Jack Sparrow. Maybe, yes. Yeah, I've been working on something for a Captain okay. Jack Grealish. All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I just need somebody to sing it. It's not going to be me. <laughs> um, but at the end of the game, oh, he was right. He should have been right pissed. Like yeah. he should have thrown an elbow in Engels' face, but you do see him coming off the pitch with Engels, had his arm around him. Good captain. Was like, it's all right, mate. We got you. You couldn't see what he was saying, but the way his body language, he was being supportive and tender. Did he do the cup mouth cover thing? He did. Yeah, he yeah. Did. He all did. players do that. So what he was probably they saying was, "Fuck off, you big twat." <laughs> No. How'd you fuck that up? But he was doing like when he strokes <laughs> no, I'm their just hair. Kidding. No, that's good. Just, he's so sweet. Well, there, there's been a meme floating around that said, surround your people with people like this. It was yeah. a college basketball game. Big guy mm-hmm. comes down with his head down, and you could see he's visibly upset. There's no context to it. Yeah. But you see one of the guards come into the picture and physically pick his chin up yeah, yeah. Lift his and head pick up. his head up. Yeah. And then he keeps his head up, and the guy walks away clapping. Yeah. Like, that's a good captain. Yes. Right. And... Cap and he w- he wasn't saying fuck off. No, I know, it, I but know. But it was, but well done to him. That's awesome. Just, that's what he should sweet. be doing. Um, and he is single handedly trying to keep Villa in the Premier really League. He really is. And I got to say, he's a better person than me because I would have told Ingalls that he's a fucking cunt for letting that ball get by him. And uh, so the shot's for you. Up the villa and fuck you, son. Atta girl. Um, now, I, I will say before we move in, before we move into the next. Uh, the Shit, next game. We should say yet. for those of you that are new, when we lo- when our teams lose games, we punish ourselves with a shot of Jepson's Malort, which is a Chicago-based liqueur 
Um, but not sweet like you would think of a it's liqueur. It's a Polish bitter. It's a Polish bitter. It's bitter. Which tastes like earwax threw up. Absolutely. It's very dry and gross, and you finish with a taste of bile. Consistently voted the worst alcohol in the world. With a very sticky, sweet ethanol aftertaste that just burns bitterness into your tongue and throat and nothing will get rid of it. Please stop describing sex with Sam. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they're married, by the way, for new listeners, our <laughs> producer and uh, Mr. Houston. That um, kind of naughty talk usually is saved for the injury time. Villa still outside the drop zone with a minus yes. 16 goal differential. West Ham in the drop zone on 24 points, just a point behind them with a minus 13 goal differential, but their game in hand. Is City is against Manchester City. Um, uh, so well, you have to well, we imagine. Well, we have Spanish Howard now. So you have to imagine that you all will be. I think you'll be safe. I think there are three worse teams than you all. Oh yeah, in I the agree. League. Wait, I agree. We play City twice coming up. Uh, Once in the final the, of the Carabao. Yeah, the, that's the coffee it. cup. Yeah, and that's <laughs> it. No, it's an energy. Okay, drink. Okay, yeah. So we don't have we don't have City again. In, in it's Premier. an energy drink that's not sold in England. Oh well, there's it's also a coffee chain called Caribou Coffee. Uh, so no, I it's Carabao. I know. I understand that. It's kind of oh. like how I do uh, Kanye is a spice and Cayenne is a rapper. I got it. I, I call it Just the coffee cup. I got it. Get it? So, uh, but it's an Indian coffee. It's an. It, now you got me fucking up. <laughs> it's an Indian energy drink, Carabao. It's not sold. Not sold in England, but they sponsor the English League Cup. Well, that's um, weird. W- one thing worth mentioning because of how you talked about the table, this game was have a go. And they did. They had yeah, a oh, go. they had a they right went, go. They Absolutely. went right at them. They had a go. It didn't work. I think you see a completely different team next week when they're playing at Southampton. They'll Absolutely. be a little bit more resolute, and they'll know they'll know to get the point. You know, they'll they'll be smarter. So uh, I think this was a oh. get out of jail free game, and it was a game you're supposed to lose. So why not have a go and run at them? Uh, going into the game today, uh, Manchester United and Chelsea. Beckoned back to like that old school '90s Premier League football. Oh yeah, that was a rough little match a rough. there. Couple fights breaking out, whole bunch of yellows. Harry Maguire's a bitch. Yeah, woo, go ahead, go right on into it. Fucking frat boy, and he looked like it after he scored as well, but he shouldn't have been on the pitch to score. Uh, little coming together, very simple, easy foul. Mitzi Batshuayi, you know, as he was trying, as uh, Maguire was trying to clear the ball on halfway, he's sliding into the technical area. On his backside after he cleared the ball. Batuai's momentum carried him further with Maguire, but he remained on his feet. As Maguire's sliding on his back, foot up in the air to protect himself, fine. I'm fine with that left foot. Didn't, yeah. didn't thrust or extend. It was already there, no problem. My problem came in where he then brought his right foot bent forward and thrust it into the nutsack of Mitchie Batuai. Yeah, spikes up right into him, yep. full extension. Problem. Uh, VAR felt the need to look at it. Yeah. Decided it wasn't violent conduct. How was it any different than the Son, penal- the, the son red card? It was the exact same thing. Only difference was one was in a rib cage, one was in a nutsack. Oh, yeah. It the, was the same, yeah. at that same ground, I about that with one. the same head official. Ooh. Yeah. Controversy. The foul happens in the technical box of Chelsea as well, right next to the fucking TV that the referee didn't didn't check. go look at. Yeah. If he would have, like, how do you not? I am oh, okay. I I get this is what I this is what I'm assuming in the refs' mm-hmm. brain. We're at the 20 minute mark of the game. I don't want to make a call that's going to forever change the outcome. Sorry, it is your job to make the calls that may forever change the outcome. If and it's you, warranted. And you need to take a look at the screen to see he extended his foot into his fucking nutsack. He kicked him in the balls. I mean, right in the ding-ding. I mean, there's no getting around it. Ding-ding or ting-ting. Yeah. <laughs> no, right in the ding-ding. <laughs> right in the mommy and daddy button. <laughs> I mean, He's got it right in the ball. Sorry, <laughs> So what uh, the first thing that I thought uh, when I saw the replay, because I was working when this game was going on. Uh, so when I saw the highlights, my first reaction was cotton. That's got to hurt. <laughs> uh, that's right. Cotton, especially because it happened to forever bro Harry Maguire. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that so that was the first bit of controversy, obviously. Um, just in general. 
It was a great win for United. Chelsea only had two thirds of the ball, but only managed one shot on target at fucking home. Yeah, how it's do you not, n- how do you not manage to get more than one shot on target? It's not on. It's it's not good enough. Just period. Overall, the game only had fucking four shots on target. Yeah. So yes, in terms of an old heavyweight bout from back in the late nineties, early two thousands in the Premier League, you're absolutely right. Um. Um. M- m- Less credit to the Martial goal, more credit to the uh, ball the cross. from oh, from Juan Basaka. <laughs> uh, just a, oh. a glanced header was all it oh. needed. Just the all, the pace was already on the ball. All you had to do was make sure it was on target. Well, the which cut, he did. The little cut back in front of the defender to get the <laughs> defender twisted and then back again. Basically, in a an, uh, 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 less than a yard's worth of space and just. Whoop, curbs it right. I so mean, this is what we were ball. missing from Juan Basaka all season that he was very good at at Crystal Palace. Mm-hmm. Um, providing that with providing the delivery into the box. Um, he finally has done that. that. That's if there's been one criticism of him since his move, because he has been and remained a solid defender. Oh, yeah, he's been great defense um, for them, but he hasn't had as much going forward as he did at Crystal Palace, and arguably, he has better tools. Right. I, w- I would say, arguably, he's got a team that's been so decimated with uh, with personnel in the in the middle of the park that he has no choice but to stay back more. He doesn't have the opportunity to get upfield as much as he would like. That's fair enough as well. Yeah. <laughs> I would agree with that. Um, Let's get into the second half, because so, that yeah. was just the first half. That was just the first half. That's all that happened there, actually. <laughs> um, VAR got involved early. As Kurt Zuma had a wonderful volley into the uh, bottom right hand corner from a uh, from a Willian corner. Yep, delightful cross. Yep, off the ball there was a push on a United defender. I huh. think this was softer than the Tottenham penalty that was given and to Villa. not a push off, not a push on the on the um, United defender. It was Fred pushing Chelsea player into. United defender and United defender fell and United down, yeah. defender falls over. Like he did, I uh, forget the Chelsea player. It might have been Aspel and Quetta, I think, but d- he didn't foul him. He didn't right. uh, like all he did was is he got pushed and he put up his arm to brace himself and bumped into the guy in front of him. Yep, there was no foul on him. I mean, it was it was a horrific call. And give Lampart credit for uh, keeping his composure. And the post game presser, right? But he just flat out said he goes with well, the first one. McGuire maliciously kicked my player. VAR got it wrong. And the second one, my player did not push the pl- defender. The defender, uh, the defender pushed him into another defender. VAR got it wrong. And he just flat out said the words, "VAR got it wrong," and left it at that. But I'd I'd have been losing my fucking mind. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I. Being on what five six million a year, <laughs> I'd have taken my fine. Mm-hmm. Yep, <laughs> I'd have said what I felt. Um, hell, hell, I'd have taken my couple of day, my couple of games up in the uh, stands too. Oh yeah, uh, that was also immediately punished by Manchester United as uh, Bruno Fernandez registering his first assist. Yep, um, Harry Maguire, who shouldn't have been on the field, getting a wonderful header, a uh, bullet header. Uh, and putting it into the far post. Great corners from uh, Bruno. Wonderful. Well, the whole game, he was putting up really oh, yeah. probing good corners. Those those um, very fast, only about eight feet high kind of corners. That's kind Perfect. of been the norm now, where you just try Perfect. to zip it in real quick, and all <laughs> oh, your yeah. all your attackers just try to do is redirect the ball. At the well, net. the the other thing is that's why it's been so hard to beat the first defender because you get that a little wrong. It's six feet high. And whoever you got on the front post clears it away, right? Unless right. you're Danny Hings, which will also come on too. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, <laughs> but the um, but that whole idea, right? If you if you loft it in any way, shape, or form, you give the goalkeeper too much time to get underneath of it. So yeah, those lovely just whipped seven and a half, eight feet high with a, a wonderful pace on it. It's got to have pace. That's that's the thing. That's because the if key. it doesn't have pace, the keeper's getting it. He can also still get to it. Yeah. Uh, so just whip it in, and, and Harry Maguire just rose above the rest, and, and it was a good header. Yeah, just he shouldn't have been on the pitch. No, right, fair enough, Ab- absolutely. And then he celebrated like the frat boy that he looks like. Uh, just arms out, look at me, look at me. Yeah. Uh, I've got a you know medium-sized ting ting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, again, technically correct, but Giroud, who's been starved of chances under under Frank Lampard, 
yeah. uh, gets onto the field finally. And half a boot offsides, which to me made no fucking difference <laughs> to the goal, obviously. I think the referee's assistant probably would have kept his flag down um, had there been no VAR. I think that goal would have stood. Stolen at the near post after another wonderful cross and headed in uh, past De Gea with no issues. Well, if you look at the way that it's paused, Maguire's feet are together. So it was clearly at a point where Maguire was shuffling. Shift, shifting. So yeah. make that a half a second and his legs wide open because he's m- shifting across and Giroud's on sides. I, I think there needs to be a harder look at the offside rule as a whole. You know, it, it's what it, I think. Half a boot. Moutinho's, you know, Adidas patch or Nike patch on the yeah. side of his boot. Yeah. Salah's armpit. Uh, Richarlison's forehead. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just it, getting to be too it's much. It's ridiculous. So this, I think there needs these, to be a look at the rule, but that's not anything that's going to happen for the remainder of this season. These millimeters are absolute bullshit. Um, just a dumb side question and concerns to Chelsea. Um, uh, do you think they're finally done with the uh, Michi Batshuayi? Uh, experiment. I hope so, because I hope Giroud. I really do like Giroud. I still like yeah. Giroud. He was in search of more first team football, and I think he deserves to play for Chelsea personally. Um, and they haven't given him a chance under Sadi or here under under Lampard. Uh, Michi is uh, he's he's Lukaku. It's time to send him out on a loan someplace, and if he has a fairly decent season for that team, aka like they send him to a Palace, because Palace would love to have him. The, you he know? was at Palace, and, and let's say he scores. 12 goals at Palace, you then sell him to Palace for like 23 million. And and yeah, just well, let him no, go. 60, let him go. 60 million after they sell Zaha. Right. <laughs> but but you just let him go. It's it's time. Well, I mean, I'm saying next season you just loan him out, but it's clear he is never going to take over for Tammy for Abraham. Tammy Abraham. Yep. He's going to be the number 1 and you have a tried and true veteran guy in Olivier Giroud. Just let him be your backup guy. Giroud's okay with that. He's right. okay with that. As long and as he plays on occasion. But even when he comes on, he scores. Yeah. Even when he comes on, he scores. They and they gig. will not give him a look. He is the most underrated player in world football. And it still makes me mad. And you know what's crazy? I, yes, I'm pissed he went to a direct competitor. Yeah. However, the man deserves to play. He's a good footballer. And, and he works hard. And that big, meaty French forehead is as sexy as can be. Even still, since he's had more time to work on it. All right, very well said. The I <laughs> I would say for he's okay in the role that he's in, and what's going to be even more amazing is he's not getting a run out. How much would I bet that man still starts up top in for France in, for France and Absolutely. European championships? Yep, because because he does the job. Like he just. It's not pretty. He's he's a poacher's goal. He's a poacher's goal scorer. He's going to get in the way. He's going to cause problems, but he's a big mammoth of a man that's going to bring down the ball and cause defenses to make both well, of their center backs absolutely. worry about him. With all the wingers that they have, and you don't have Tammy available, put his ass up front. And he's won something like ninety percent of his aerial duels or something like that. Yeah, as a center forward, and and Didier Deschamps loves Olivier Giroud. Didn't care that he wasn't really playing at Arsenal, that he was a bit part guy that, that last season or two. Came on, didn't score a goal in the World Cup, but what he does do is all the dirty work. Yep. He had a couple of assists, or hockey assists as well, um, for uh, uh, um, Antoine Griezmann, uh, he was, Paul Pogba. He was for paramount all the, all these in the World Cup final. Without him, France would not have won that World Cup. Especially the final match. The final match, he was... if. You give him if you were to give a man in a ma- man of the match award for just getting it done on the pitch, he was that guy. Um, I'll close with with this one final thought, and uh, if you care to respond, feel free. At least there's something more to watch besides the uh, bottom half of the table now, because it seems like there's actually going to be a battle for fourth and fifth place, and fourth and fifth place, fifth place in particular, now means something, big time. Your team found some goals this weekend, hello, Sam. Hello, hello, hello. Arsenal 4, Newcastle nil. Now that we're done with all that bullshit, we get to the meat and potatoes. <laughs> Go get them. All right. First half was turgid. Let's just get that out of the way. Fucking terrible for both sides. Ugly as shit. Oh, it was terrible game. Apparently, again. Mikel Arteta has a set of cojones, and he let the boys know what the fuck is going on. Because they came out and turned on the goddamn style, didn't they? 
Uh, just four shots on targets uh, on target in that first half between the two sides. And Newcastle, honestly, in my opinion, looked more dangerous. They did. Arsenal gave the ball away cheaply on many of occasions. Um, but Arsenal still a Kelter Skelter at the back. I'm trying to get all the negative out of the way. Uh, I, w- I was going to say the only thing that uh, works out well, and this is the only thing I can really say about Newcastle, is that worked out well is that Newcastle can't score any goals from their attackers right now, which benefited your shitty defense. Jolinton is so slow. So very slow. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with him. Can't get in the box. Save his life. He's the center forward. <laughs> Amaron, Maximon, they they both they, oh, yeah. they know what they're doing. Maximon hit the post. It was yeah. brilliant as well. Um, uh, but anyway, <laughs> a much better start to the half uh, yes. in the second half for the Arsenal uh, with Eddie, uh, Eddie and Ketia striking the crossbar. Still not really sure how he managed to put that that high. Um, seemed like a pretty guilt head chance uh, right. and should have put it away. Anyway, um, a wonderful cross from Pepe. Nice floated cross right into that same danger area. And Aubameyang worked his body well, kind of boxed his defender out and got a fantastic header on target <laughs> uh, that ended up scoring um, out of the reach of Dubravka, who I thought had a great game. He had one I thought he could have yeah. had. Yeah, but he had two or three phenomenal saves yeah, that really well, kept them in it. It's what Dubravka does. Moving forward. Yeah, Dubravka yeah, yeah. keeps you in games. Bukayo Sako, just a few minutes after that header, Mm -hmm. had the nutmeg of the season. Yes, he did. When he left Lazaro for dead. Lazaro even turned around like he was like, he robbed me. (laughs) You're damn right he did, son. You you wouldn't wouldn't really be all that uh, upset if you heard him as he went through your legs go, (laughs) Oh, he did. And he did in the Mm -hmm. post-match. I'll come on to that. Looked up and... Mustafi and Pepe were both lurking around the penalty spot. And me and Alan and I were actually texting during the game, uh, our magpie friend. Uh-huh. And, uh, who's Your nemesis. My you nemesis. Say his name correctly. My nemesis. He, Alan. Uh, but he's, he's been on the show before, knows his stuff. And we texted, and I said, to be honest with you, when he looked up and saw Mustafi and Pepe, I personally, as an Arsenal supporter, fancied Newcastle to get that clear. <laughs> 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 In one way or another. But Pepe... Uh, gets a goal from open play for a change, which doesn't always happen. Um, I think it's only happened twice this season um, from open play. But anyway, that happened. That that nutmeg was just sexy. Uh, Mesut Ozil found the back of the net, which was uh, for the first time in a very long time, and Alexandre Lacazette uh, put the icing on the cake. Um, and Pepe boy, rec- did he need a goal. Oh, yeah. and it, He fucked up, too. The ball, actually, after he struck it with his right foot, hit his plant foot. That's why Dubravka was diving to the right and the ball stayed where it was. Ah, got it. Yeah. Um, unintentional. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Went in the back of the net. Yeah, it's a goal. He needed it bad, and I I bet you he's going to go on a streak. You, as as quote-unquote uh, Drarsenal, like, you needed four. Like, that's, that's a big kick in the pants. That's a oh, big well, lift. We've only lost under Mikel Arteta <laughs> once, and that was that heartbreaker against Chelsea at the yeah. Emirates. Other than that, he's unbeaten. Problem is... A lot of draws. It's like seven draws. A lot of draws. Two wins, and then this one, the, the one loss. So much drawing. About. Yeah. Um, four goals and three assists from our four big did, money did players. Did I tell you? All of the draw. All of the draws. All of yeah. the draws. All of the draws. Uh, four goals and three assists from our big four money makers, which is good. They're finally clicking, it seems. Um, Seem to be working well together, too. Oh yeah, they're they, starting to figure out each other. Correct, uh, <laughs> but that, it it just it all at the end of the day it just all proved to be too much for the tune. Um, and welcome Nicola Pepe, finally, a goal and two assists. He's starting to settle in. Only yeah. took about seven months, but he's starting to really properly set in. Um, and I I like that. That's good, especially since we spent seventy two million pounds on him. Yeah. Um, we needed well, that. Well, it's over like the next 15 and a half years that you paid that $72 million. Correct. After the game. Loved this. Uh, Saka was there. <laughs> uh, Bakuya Saka was there. Mm-hmm. with Who's only 18. Yeah, young uh, lad. Makeshift left back for us. Was there with the captain, Pierre Mkabomiang. And being given the Man of the Match Award, the Barclays Man of the Match Award, which I think he rightly deserved. Bukuya Saka was fantastic. 
Oh, he had a great game. <clears throat> they watched the replay <laughs> of his nutmeg and assist. <laughs> and as it, he's standing there with a bombing, Mike to his face, and he goes, "Now watch this. Just a little nutmeg there." The 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 uh, reporter, and he goes, "Whoop!" <laughs> <laughs> as it's as it's happening on the replay, <laughs> he goes, "Whoop!" And then Aubameyang grabs him, and they both laugh hysterically about what he did to Lazaro. Yeah, I mean, Lazaro could have dropped his dreads at that point. Oh, I mean, it was it's... bad. Yeah, ankles, that was bad. Ankles left way far behind. That was. Oh, it yeah. was a sick move. Oh, it was just nifty. It um, was nifty. I assume. The defense still has to worry you because again, oh, big time. you're playing a team that does not score unless it's from set pieces, and it's only defenders scoring their goals for them, and it's only Fun when stat. it's it's only when it's in uh, added time. So Newcastle yeah. have only scored 24 goals this season. 20, 20 of those goals. That's it. 20 of those 24 have been scored by center backs. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, they're between Fabian Shaw, <laughs> uh, uh, Lascelles, mm-hmm. uh, Kieran Clark, and the other one, uh, Lejeune. Lejeune, who put the two four in four of us. those center defenders have hmm. scored twenty of their twenty-four goals this season. Yeah, huh? Insane. <laughs> and unfortunately for them, they're slowly slipping back yep. into it. But I think they'll be okay because I think there's enough. Like like you say, there's three bad enough. T- there's three teams that are worse than them. But you don't score goals, you don't win football matches. And it's one thing when Rafa's at the helm and you feel really confident. It's another thing when it's fucking Stevie Bruce. Correct. Absolutely. And that's the other thing that Alan texts me. That that brings me exactly to the last point. Look at you, professional with the transition. Mm, look at that. Um, he said. This is the type of shit that didn't happen under Rafa. This is what wouldn't have been. We may have lost, and that would have been fair and fine because you all were the better team in the second half. But we would not have been allowed to capitulate. Our heads would not have been allowed to drop. And lost say for lost instance, two nil, especially the Mesedozo goal, that would have not been allowed to have happened. Yeah, thirty-five passes. Most passes leading up to a goal in the Premier League this season was that one. Mm. And from 21 years of Arsene Wenger, 22 years of Arsene Wenger, I got me Arsenal back. Yeah. 35 passes leading up to a goal. Mate, if Tegan wasn't in the room, I'd have dick coptered in my living room. To finish up the league in O, oh, so that happened. No, I'm not done yet. You're I'm just done. kidding. <laughs> Liverpool 1, <laughs> Norwich 0, Wolverhampton 0, Leicester 0, Burnley 2, Southampton 1. Um, we're not talking about the team that uh, uh, narrowly lost to Liverpool. Um, they put up a valiant effort, but I'm just not talking about them anymore. Well, they really held strong, but ultimately crumbled under the pressure. How nice to see Saeed Omane back from injury. How funny would it have been if Notch had won? <laughs> and what a strike with his off foot. Um, yes, Mane. very good, very good goal. Um, I, the, the main thing I was going to bring up is real simple. You spend the money on a world-class keeper for the following reason. He has to make two saves, and they're both world-fucking-class. I, 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 don't, I don't like Ali McBeal because he's fucking red, but he, he saved your game. Like, if this was the Liverpool team of the past many years, that keeper would have given up that goal, especially the fast break that he gets the little hand out on. Like... He he gives up that goal. Well, you lose that you lose see, that game one nothing. You give up a draw. Like you you just seeing as you were a goalkeeper for your entire life, <coughs> nobody would hate you for being still part of the goalkeepers union, where you can take your hat off to a keeper. It doesn't make you a bad Evertonian to like Allison and want to lick his butt crack. No, I don't <laughs> like him. He's Ali McBeal, not Allison. But in the moment, in the moment of that game. His saves were so paramountly important, and it and and honestly, for for keepers to toot the keeper union horn, that's what you're supposed to do. Absolutely, and that goes completely unnoticed. Well, how many times in most instances, yeah. everybody's going to remember the fact that Monty scored a goal and they got out of there one nothing. What they're not going to remember is the two on him 
that he took off of a fucking player's yeah. foot. Like, they're not going to remember that. Now, how many times have we said it's, do you want, say, for instance, right? We've talked about it in the past. When Joe Hart was at the peak of his powers at City, w- in England's goalkeeping crisis, would you rather have Nick Pope? Would you rather have Tom Heaton at the time? Would you rather have Ben Foster? Would you rather have uh, <coughs> Fraser Forster, uh, who was at Southampton at the right. time? A keeper that's seeing shots on a regular basis and reacting to them well and doing well, or would you rather a top-class keeper, top-team keeper, that only sees three shots a game. And I say, mm-hmm. and I kind of now, I, I used to say I would rather a keeper that's seen more action because they're on. The problem is, is England are a decent side and they'll keep the ball more often than not in international football. What you do want, what, what separates these top class keepers, right? These top team keepers from mid level and lower level keepers who do do well on occasion. Uh, uh, ben Foster, I don't think, is a problem to Watford. I think he's a saving grace. Of he made wh- one mistake this year. Why they're not on the foot of the table. Yeah. Um, but the difference is, is when England <coughs> have the ball for 60% of the game, can he stay switched on? Right. Can he be ready for that one opportunity? When he's literally back there picking fucking dandelions, can he stay switched on to make that one save? And that's what Allison does do. Yeah, well, I mean, he does that because he's also the keeper for Brazil, and you're Brazil not, has the ball. You're most not going to game, right? Yeah. You're not going to see a lot of shots. But he has the ability, right? He has extra ability. We've seen a few times this season with some flicks and step overs, <laughs> but he has the distribution. Uh, but he has the ability and the mental strength to stay switched on and be ready in that one crucial moment. Now, granted, the shot from Team Mapuki was straight down his throat. Yeah, but it was a venomous hit. Oh, it was a good hit. It was a venomous hit. hit. He had to hold Re- on to it. Really, he held bigger, on to it well. The bigger, the bigger save was the was the two on him. Yeah, where yeah they under, d- when he d- got yeah, over, just yeah, that, and slots it away. Because at that point, it's also it's nil nil. At that point, Correct. and yeah, it's yeah. like that's that's the be that's the be all end all save there. Yeah, I'm you with know? you. Uh, it's you know uh, other than that, kind of not really a scary moment, but it does go to prove that. The worst can play with the best any any day of the week in this league, and that's why we like this league so much. Love this league so you know, much. Um, Wolves were clearly the better side than the Foxes, but the Foxes found a way to get a point. That's really the long and short of it. This game, for me, failed to live up to to what could have been. I mean, we touted this game as one of the thigh rubbers of the weekend. Should have been like a 2-2. Two to two. Should have been a goals galore. These aren't particularly... Great defensive but it, sides. It was just well, Leicester was, but in yeah. recent times, no. Yeah. Uh, but this season, they were at one point by Christmas. I think they were top five, maybe even the best defense in the top five leagues of Europe. Yeah, yeah, they were by Christmas, and then they kind of fell apart for a bit. Yeah. Um. But anyway, just six uh, shots on target, most of which were in the first half. I think I counted four or five in the first half. Yeah. So it just became turgid. Um, they're just, they're not a lot to talk about. Vardy game, to Vardy never got involved. No, never, never once got involved in the match. No, Var did though. Yeah. Uh, on a shoelace, denying Wolves an opener. Um, that I think Raul Jimenez put away. Yeah. Uh, and there was a little bit of good work from both goalkeepers, but the game was chippy. Yeah. It looked like two teams vying for fourth position, and the way Leicester have fallen in recent times, they're lucky that Chelsea has fallen harder. Chelsea's really falling harder. Yep. So you know. That's the only reason Leicester are still in third. If well, Chelsea were winning games, they'd be in third in a heartbeat. Yeah, but they're actually they're close enough to City t- that if they beat them this, I think it's this weekend they play each other. If they beat them, they're suddenly in second place. Yeah, but it, it doesn't matter. City's not in Europe. We'll talk about it in my closing. Yep. Um, Burnley Southampton ended up being a fun match to watch. I thought it was going to be a snooze fest, and it was actually, you know, I was like, ah, the early morning game. I'm getting up to let out the chickens. I'm just going to go back to bed and watch for my watch for my phone. But I turned on the game, and it's already one nothing off the off the Ings gaff, which you'll get to in a second. <laughs> and 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 I was like, okay, I'll stick with it. And then Ings gets the like. It was just it was a fun fucking game to watch, man. Yes. Now it did come at a cost for Burnley, though. Oh yeah, uh, Chris Wood went off injured. Ashley Barnes still injured. Yeah. Um, now Vidra, who did score the second Burnley goal, b- fucking brilliantly, um, 
but hasn't scored for 18 months. I don't know if he's going to be able to lead the line for them. And you got to rely on Jay Rodriguez, and right. you really and don't want to do well, that. Well, he's also not a center forward. Yeah, he's so, old, and too. Especially the way that they play. Yeah. Very physical, very, you know, and, old school English style. And Jay's a very physical player his whole career, so he's one of those guys where it's like, oh, he's not 30 yet, but he's played the soccer life of a 40-year-old. I think he's... 32, 33. Yeah, but he's played the soccer life of a 45-year-old. Absolutely. He's just, it's, I like he's how you played, adjusted your age because yeah. I adjusted the age yeah. overall. He's, he, I mean, it's <laughs> it's like the Dwayne, it, it was like Dwayne Wade in basketball. Absolutely. Where it was just like, he charges the lane all the time. He gets beat up and knocked around yeah. and plays this insanely physical game that your body just, just can't handle it. Just can't handle it. Absolutely. And you put Rodriguez up top, he isn't going to be able to run a full game for you. No. Um, and now we get to the fun part. Mm-hmm. Very odd first goal there. Yeah. Ashley Westwood, which, by the way, I do love a man named Ashley. Mm-hmm. Just putting that out there. Thanks for sharing. If Carly would let me, our third son would be named Ashley. Ashley. I love it. Mike I love Ashley? everything about it. No. <laughs> first name. Uh, but anyway, Ashley Westwood. Uh, swings in a corner under very blusterous conditions down there on the south coast as England was being hammered by Storm Dennis this weekend unlike the blusterous conditions that happened when Jurgen Klopp lost a game and said it was really fucking windy out there all the games he's lost <laughs> all the games he's drawn <laughs> uh, this one actually was blusterous though uh, um, by the way but c- real quick just communication back and forth uh, I was talking with uh, <laughs> Russ uh, during the Liverpool match yes. about um, about the city stuff, and I was like, "Look at you guys! You don't even want City to take all the glory for being the uh, the shittiest story of the weekend. You're going to go out and lose to Norwich." Yeah. And his first response: "Well, it is really windy out <laughs> there." <laughs> but it was though. Dennis is <coughs> crushing this the a uh, right, couple weeks after uh, Kiara. Yeah. Which is spelled Sierra, fucking British. Anyway, um, Ashley Westwood scored straight from a corner. <laughs> yeah. In the fucking Premier League. On the near post. <laughs> Which there should always be somebody on the near post. And there was Danny Ings, uh, who I guess thought that he was on the post <laughs> and not a yard beyond the post. And uh, let it go. Yep. And then uh, McCarthy doing his best Jordan Pickford. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, uh, Guaita, yeah, and standing behind his own line because that's a good place to save that's the ball. That's a great place for a goalkeeper to be <laughs> in the fucking goal. Yep. Um, Danny Ings lets the ball go, gets out of the way, makes sure the keeper saw it late while he was out of position, uh, and it just crept in at the near post. Uh, goal given, and rightly so. Ings made up for it though. He did make up for Ooh. it. What a strike. Uh, sidestepping two, I think it was. Uh, I think uh, that now puts him one behind uh, Vardy for the lead for uh, for goals. Now. Yep. He's now bit, one behind him. Bit of a pile driver into the lower right-hand corner. Uh, that was fantastic. Um, and then the Vidra goal. And then the Vidra goal. Uh, Shane Long did hit the crossbar um, uh, but just before that. And then uh, Matej Vidra. Yep. Sealed it for Burnley. Fantastic strike. Uh, after the angle of trunk, too. Took it off his chest well. That was great. Yep. Ball got away from him a little bit. Defender was in the right position. Just got a boot to it. Yeah, outside jumped, of the foot. Just kind of rolled it out to himself. Jump, yeah, jumped over the tackle and then struck it on the half volley and kept it low enough that it crept under the uh, crossbar. Yeah, uh, was... Same kind of angle as it entered the goal. Gorgeous head. As... Um, uh, as uh, Vertonghen, not yeah, Vertonghen, Gord- Virel, yeah, gorgeous uh, for Tottenham. Oh, fantastic! Caught it true. Now with both Chris Wood and Ashley Barnes out, it's going to be a little tough going for Burnley, as we said. Yeah, I'm, but I'm nervous for them. Nah, see, I was gonna, I'm gonna say the opposite. That ex- that three points gets them really fucking close to 39, and with 12 games left, I feel like they'll find. Four points in there, even yeah, without the sh- like. I I feel like they've done enough to get themselves safe. Now on the other hand, um, Southampton, now after that nice little run they have, have now dropped a couple in a row, and also have the worst home record in the entire Prem. And it doesn't come down to just that nine nothing loss. They're losing at home like it's going out of style. Yep. 
that's not good for them, especially when, you know, a team like Villa, who's spunky and trying to, you know, spunky, try, like spunky. trying to get themselves out of they the bottom, spunky. go into a place like Southampton next week. I feel pretty confident that a team like Villa could go in there and get points. What I'm nervous about is Tyrone Mings being out and Danny Ings playing so well. He that, could hurt him. Right, which is why I stayed away from that in my bet. He's yeah. got to be back by then. Tonsillitis. How long is that going Yeah, just tonsillitis. For? He'll be back. <coughs> Depends. Uh, um, but uh, but Southampton, I think, is much... I'm going to start looking it up. <laughs> Southampton, much like, uh, much like Brighton, I think both those South Coast teams, along with Bournemouth, they're starting to sneak their way into that battle. And I don't know if... I'm not sold that any of those three teams necessarily have the... Uh, intestinal fortitude to uh to handle a battle where i think teams like villa and west ham do is that a seinfeld reference no just close to it yeah just a reference in general intestinal fortitude you like that yeah i did good i did it's time to tell you what little we know it is prediction time uh the chicken is back over 500 pat loses his bet by a half a goal Liverpool needed to win by a goal and a half. Pat doesn't hit. Womp, womp. Um, nobody could score in my game, but Sammy, you hit big on your parlay. Boy, did he let everybody know on Facebook. What's good? 390. And you're still 1,097 in the hole. That's what crapshoot do you have for us this week? Not a crapshoot, my friend. I'm going for North London double <laughs> uh, parlay. With Tottenham to beat Chelsea away because they look toothless, and Arsenal to beat Everton at the Emirates, I'm putting two hundred on this one to climb well out of the hole, my friend. And that would give me, okay, uh huh, it's plus six sixty eight, so that would give me thirteen thirty six. <laughs> Thirteen thirty six. Yeah, do it. Six sixty eight times now. two. Six sixty eight times two. Thirteen thirty six. I'm not doing the math. I'm trying to look up Pat's bet here. So <laughs> no. fuck off. All I'm right, not hold doing on. the math either. I'm All just right, I got the it. Two Fine. Six sixty eight times two. Thirteen thirty six. Thank you very much. Uh huh. I know what happens when it comes to my money. Okay? Uh huh. <laughs> and my money is going to be good this weekend as my boys kick the shit out of your boys. Uh, because we're all of a sudden lively again. And uh, the old Tottenham beats Chelsea away, and Jose gets one over on his <coughs> former protege. Oh, I'm going to fucking giggle when your bet doesn't come in. All right, so um, Pat, uh, I, his text was actually far more interesting than but if, his... But if it does come in, Sam, Sam, I'll be over 200 up. Okay. Okay. All right. I hear you. I just ya. want you to know that. Okay. Just, you nervous? It's not coming in. Do no. You hear them footsteps, Sam? No, I don't. I don't. The listeners do right now. Okay. They hear those you, footsteps. You go ahead and keep <laughs> that up. Um, like I said, Pat's text was far more interesting than his email, so I'm going to read both. Go ahead. And now it's time for our degenerate gambling friend, Pat's Pick of the Week. I sent it very short. I looked it up a little bit. I'm exhausted <laughs> from binge drinking and seven rounds of golf in four days. Ooh. Heading back to bed. Talk to you later. That is that is more magnificent than the email. He should have put that into the email. <laughs> I half-assed my bet this week because I was binge drinking and playing golf for four days. Nice. Um, so this Saturday is the primetime game. Is Arsenal hosting Everton? I'm not on any side to win, so I'll put a hundred down on plus two fifty for the draw. Wah, wah. <laughs> Which will fuck your bet. But it won't. It'll fuck your it bet. It ain't coming in. Oh, yours is not coming in. You know that, right? You just better have a chicken dinner ready for me next Monday, my friend, because I will be a winner winner. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, you know what? <laughs> when when you get to that winner winner status, I want you to go ahead and keep no, betting like recklessly. That. That was right off the dome piece, Mel. I just want to know which chicken you want for dinner. Gertrude. That bitch hasn't made any eggs. She doesn't make bets. She doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, Gertrude's kind of pretty. So Fuck that hoe. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Anywho. Um, so <laughs> I I missed, which put me down to one uh, minus 167. 
Uh, but I'm going to find my way out of the hole, out of the red, and into the black really soon with... Big Sam's Lock of the Week. Please say 500 on Liverpool. I'd love it. And like I said, 20% of the time, it works 100% <laughs> of the time. Going to be back up to 30 in no time. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take uh, Manchester United with the win and Martial to score, uh, which comes in at uh, 200 for a $100 bet. I think Plus I think Wat- I think Watford's in trouble. I think Martial will find a way to get into the net. Um, he's the only guy up there, so he did today. Yep, and I think I think Bruno uh, uh, Fernandez will find him. I I think he helps. So I think Martial will find a goal because that's really what Martial's problem is: is when he doesn't have a point man getting him the ball. You he know, doesn't it, have a complimentary piece. <clears throat> yeah, he scores a lot of goals when Pogba's on the pitch. He scores a lot of goals when. Um, Rashford's on the pitch. He scores a lot of goals now, I think, when Fernandez is on the pitch. Absolutely. So um, that was a pretty great segment, but we give you more. We give you Kitty the Chicken. All right. So Kitty was... Graham's the- dancing. Are you going to get it on video? Nope. You nope. Just it's Dance Party USA in here. Good lord. That's what happens when you win money. So, Kitty was in a good mood and enjoying the warming weather. And she was in Chicago for the All Star weekend. Knowing that she's close with LeBron, I gave her Liverpool hosting West Ham. Now, I wasn't surprised by her pick, but I was sure she was going to show me courtside pictures. But instead, it was Kitty backstage at Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Yeah, John is red through and through, so clearly Kitty is choosing Liverpool. Yeah, John's always, uh, he's always on the Men in Blazers show, and he always talks about uh, Liverpool, big Liverpool supporter. Me too. I'm surprised. I thought we'd see some courtside seats from the dunk contest and stuff like that. No one, no one, her and Bron Bron are so close. I'm a little surprised. We might get some photos later. You know, Kitty likes to keep her cards close to her chest, and, uh, As always, people, remember to gamble legally and responsibly. Talking about kicks in the nuts. Go ahead, Sam. Your boy scored. Yeah. Yeah, but we didn't. We we lost. Yeah, but I scored, though. We did lose 4-3 off some bullshit. Kick in the nuts, man. God. Um, We played really well, too, I think, in, in stretches. Uh, I think I had one of my best games for a long time, Yeah. Uh, to be honest. My best all-around performances uh, overall. There were a few that we should have put away that we didn't, which were obviously costly in the end. Um, but overall, I don't think we were too old for that shit. Uh, I think we gave a good account of ourselves. Young, and fast team, and normally young, fast teams give us a really hard time. And we played them we well. We played just very well. Yeah, I, I, this is... It, missing a guy like Mikey is going to hurt us because he adds just yeah. versatility throughout the entire pitch Absolutely. for us. And it's it's going to be it's it's going to be a tough season this season now uh but there's something wrong with uh if we end up not doing too sharp going down to D2 and getting a little uh getting a little uh quick victory into our uh stride again. Say we are slump, the Norwich. Slump buster. Say we are the Norwich of uh D1 at Soccer Dome. Yeah. Uh played decent football, can't seem to put any points on the board. <laughs> nope. So, but uh, I mean, uh, like I said, I think we played well. Um, it's unfortunate, but we'll uh, we'll if we do get relegated, we'll come back stronger than ever. Yep. Well, that uh, about wraps it up for us. So, Sammy, parting words. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's been dominating the news? Is that what you're about to talk about? In a new segment, I like to call the Dick of the Week. Ooh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a production for that. <laughs> uh, the Argentine manager Marcelo Bielsa, uh, according to two players played under him previously. Um, Apparently, after losses, he prefers to uh, isolate himself. Uh, In this particular instance, the first time it happened, one player recounted that he came in uh, seething and was obviously very hot, sweating, and walking up and down the dressing room, not saying a word to anyone. He proceeded to leave the dressing room and go lay down in the physio's room. Everybody wondered where he was and what they were going to say to him, so two players went to look for him, these two blokes, 
and one of them said that they opened the door to the physio's room, turned on the light, and there he was on a physio's table laying down naked. <laughs> well, just completely he belly bollocks. Hot and needed to cool off. Well, he then said, when asked about this, <laughs> he said that sometimes after losses, I like to lay by myself on a tabletop naked. Okay. So apparently, Beals is the best. Please make it up to the <laughs> prep. He Please has to make go it to up the to the prep. I don't see anything wrong with this. <laughs> if it, if he wasn't a leads manager, I would act I would, like I'd buy a kit. I'd do everything that I could do to make help them come up. <laughs> yeah, but because it's leads, I won't buy a kit. Fuck leads. But I do want them back in the Premier League so we can have Bielsa for for, for a season, at Be- least a Bielsa, season. Bielsa, Bielsa for a season, and and then our boy Lars, his team in the Prem. That'd yes, be, it'd be fucking lovely. fabulous. We could finally have him on the show. But they're in the championship, so he doesn't deserve it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Bielsa goes and lays naked after games, <laughs> which is fantastic. And to the point where they walked in, turned a light on, didn't cover himself, just take it the fuck out. Uh, yeah. There's my dick. Yeah. Leave me alone. There is my dick. There it is. For all of its gloriness, <laughs> there's my dick. Leave me alone. That's right. That's usually us. Uh, Sam usually says, uh, it, it's my balls. That's right. That's rule number one. All right. Anything else? No, that's all for the moment. Okay. Very good. I thought you were going to talk about City, but that's all right. We'll talk about that another oh, time. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's eh. tr- I forgot about that. Yeah. Ban for t- Well, there isn't much to say. Yeah. They still have to um, appeal. appeal and all, go through that process. Uh, but they were found to be in big trouble, obviously, um, fudging their books mm-hmm. <laughs> with sponsorship deals from another company that their owners own, Etihad Airways. Uh, and actually posted losses over a two-season span of 180 million euros, where they are only allowed to lose 45 million euros. So they are in breach of financial fair play, uh, and they have been banned by UEFA for two seasons from European competition. So no Champions League, no Europa League. Got to see how this all plays out because uh, City is uh, nouveau riche. They aren't. Yep. They aren't. They weren't a very good club for a very, very long time, and they are just very recently a very successful club because of the influx of money that they have had. Let's see how much everybody cares about it when they're in trouble and they're not able to play at the highest levels. Let's see how much those players care about that club. Well, you the, know? Big, the the big thing is 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 they have locked down most of their players to long term deals. So can other clubs afford them? Yeah. True. Very true. Are we going to see the the new trend of two year loan deals? Or are we going to see a bunch of those from City? Yeah, two year loan deal. We'll get in a medium good player, and continue on that way. Yeah, or we'll finish in tenth and we'll be fine. And then and then the next year we get you guys we back and we finish in fourth and and qualify for the right, Champions League. Precisely. Exactly. So we'll we'll talk more about that as more details become available. So uh, that about wraps it up, boys and girls. Uh, next up is injury time. It's just us previewing the uh, the next weeks, the weekend's games, and it's for all of our Patreon subscribers. Sammy, how do you find out about our Patreon page? Uh, you just go to www.patreon.com backslash du football show, and you decide how much money you want to give us and how much extra content you want to get <laughs> because there's different levels, different strokes for different folks. Let's say. Yeah, just like Bielsa on a table. Hey, you can get upwards of another like hour and a half worth of show. You know? Worth of There's content, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Every day we do sound check, and I just leave the mics on while we talk about some inane topics. Uh, today it was I already forgot. A damn malort. Yeah, eats my brain cells. It happens. Yeah, Ugh, I'm not getting used to it. I had to we give were, them. We back were talking. We were talking about. Uh, how Jamie Vardy would react oh, to yeah. us telling him that on our show we talk about him dating a chicken. Oh, yeah, whether or not he would headbutt or how fast he would headbutt or which bloke he would headbutt first. Oh, he'd beat the shit out of us and then giggle and say it was funny. Yeah, I agree. Um, so come check it out. All right, everybody, I'm going to stop rambling. Till next time. This is the finish of the show, right? Yes, it is. Is that a
and it was um, going down the rabbit hole. Either made it to Twitter or Facebook. Yeah. Strip club. 